G'day, Patrick Von Rao here, orthopaedic surgeon from the Brisbane Hip Clinic. This presentation's on the use of um, tablet oral pharmaceuticals for the management of uh, hip osteoarthritis. Um, really important topic because um, uh, if used um, skillfully and well, um, you can receive um, really good results with a minimum of side effects from the um, from the use of uh, tablet pharmaceuticals and it forms a really important part of the overall general management plan for your uh, osteoarthritic wear. Generally speaking, we don't um, use tablets in isolation. Um, we would generally recommend that we use uh, a combination of strategies to be able to attack the uh, problem from a number of different angles. Um, and in that way, we usually get uh, the best results from the from the use of the tablets. So, um, in general, management of osteoarthritis um, has a, almost like a three-pronged approach. Um, we use um, exercise prescription, um, strength and conditioning, and uh, uh, exercise planning, physiotherapy, uh, as one part of our management strategy. <clears throat> we use long-acting um, generally injectable um, pharmaceuticals uh, like a visco supplement uh, to be able to reduce the symptoms and then uh, for the intermittent management of ups and downs, flares of the symptoms, that's when we start to rely and use our, our tablets on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis. Um, it's important to uh, mention that there are some people with different types of arthritis. So the management of osteoarthritis um, we generally use uh, combinations of uh, paracetamol products and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and sometimes analgesics. But in people with inflammatory types of arthritic wear, so for instance rheumatoid arthritis or other related conditions, there may be specific medications that are prescribed to them for that particular style of arthritis condition. Um, and generally that's under the um, auspices of a, um, of a rheumatologist. So um, those latter medications that are used for inflammatory arthropathy are not part of my discussion today. Um, what I'll be talking about predominantly is the management of osteoarthritis. Generally we use uh, oral pharmaceutical preparations on an intermittent basis. So um, whilst a lot of the medications are very suitable for continuous use. Um, and there are some people who just fine with that and they experience no side effects from it and that they get great symptom relief. Um, generally, most of the time, we would recommend the use of oral pharmaceuticals um, as part of a plan to be able to reduce the flares of symptoms. So where a person might be getting generally good symptom control, but intermittently related to activity or sporting pursuits or, um, or um, alternatively out of the blue, if they're starting to get an, ex an exacerbation of their symptoms, then um, the tablet therapies form a really useful strategy for being able to knock the symptoms down when they're having that little bit of a flare up. So it provides people with a bit more smooth pain control um, um, and gives them an alternative to be able to step up their medication use or step up their, 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 their non-surgical therapy for finite periods of time whilst they require. There are a number of alternatives uh, for tablet and oral pharmaceuticals and the management of osteoarthritis and generally um, they're broken into three main groups. Um, there's um, paracetamol products, um, there's non-steroidal anti-inflammatory preparations, um, and there's analgesics. Um, so each one of those groups has their own individual um, merits and roles. Um, and um, indeed, sometimes we might blend some of those medications um, together because they have different um, profiles of use. And um, indeed, the the side effect profile of any of the medications um, is reduced if we don't give one medication at a very high dose. What we tend to use is multiple medications, for instance, at a very low dose together, um, and so that you don't get any side effects from any one of the preparations individually. Um, indeed, some of the tablet oral pharmaceuticals um, 
indeed are blended already. So for instance, you might see um, medications that have combinations of, say for instance, codeine and paracetamol together, right? Because um, in that way, we can get uh, blended results from both of the medications in the one tablet. Paracetamol products are a really important part of the overall management of osteoarthritis in a lot of people. Um, the main uh, advantage of paracetamol products is that they're really well tolerated. Um, so if taken within the doctor's uh, prescriptive guidelines, the chances of you having a, a side effect from paracetamol is um, really, really small. And in particular, we don't really see um, at all very often any people who get gastrointestinal upset or irritability, um, like for instance we might see with anti-inflammatory preparations. Probably one of the downsides of paracetamol is that it has a fairly modest effect. Um, so the, they're not a particularly strong medication, so that the degree of analgesic effect that you get from paracetamol um, uh, does have some degree of limitation. The other um, aspect of paracetamol products is that um, they aren't particularly long-acting, so they have a, a fairly what we term short half-life. So to be able to get um, best effect from a paracetamol product um, when you require it, you generally need to um, take the dose relatively frequently. Um, most paracetamol preparations do need to be taken a number of times throughout the day. There are some paracetamol products, however, um, which are sustained release, um, which means that the medication will be absorbed a little bit slower um, so that you don't need to dose quite as frequently. So for instance, Panadol Osteo is an example of that, where um, you can now adopt a, a less uh, frequent dosing regime to be able to achieve um, the same effect. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory preparations are really common uh, medication used <clears throat> in the management of osteoarthritis and uh, we would see a lot of people getting um, quite significant benefit from this uh, style of medication. Uh, there are uh, a number of different types of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory preparations available. Some of them are available over the counter so you don't require a doctor's prescription for them. Um, they would be medications, for instance, like Nurofen or Voltaren, uh, where you can buy them from either a pharmacy um, without a prescription or alternatively sometimes even uh, from a, a supermarket. Um, the um, over-the-counter anti-inflammatory preparations are fine. Um, what we tend to find, however, is that there are some advantages in the prescription uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory preparations. Uh, in particular, prescription non-steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, medications tend to be um, a little bit more stomach friendly. Uh, they're what's called COX-2 selective. Um, and so uh, what it means is that you tend to get for any degree of anti-inflammatory effect upon the musculoskeletal system, you tend to get less effect upon the stomach lining. And so they tend to be better tolerated, particularly for people who are more at risk of having gastritis or stomach irritation as a result of anti-inflammatory preparations. The other advantage of prescribed anti-inflammatory preparations is that we have the option of using some medications that have sustained release, um, which means that you can get a 24 hour uh, effect from a single tablet, which means that it's um, maybe a little easier to remember to take the tablets. Uh, we tend to get dosing regimes a little bit easier to be able to comply with. So there are some uh, advantages in the prescription anti-inflammatory medications, but having said that, if the over-the-counter medications are working just fine for you, then indeed you can use them instead. Uh, in respect of the risk of having um, side effects from non steroidal anti-inflammatory preparations, the most common side effect uh, is um, stomach upset, um, so gastritis um, or irritation, uh, indigestion, heartburn. Um, there are some people also who might get um, other types of side effects. Um, so for instance, asthmatics um, may experience increasing problems with their asthma control uh, if um, managed with anti-inflammatory preparations. That's not every asthmatic, but it can be seen in some. 
Uh, and then there are some people who get allergic reactions and that's a little bit hard to predict. Um, some people might have allergy reactions to one style of anti-inflammatory, for instance with um, hives or something like that, um, but not with others. And so sometimes um, if we're finding that we are getting some benefit from a clinical perspective in terms of um, assisting with their arthritis, but they're not um, getting, but the person is having problems with side effects, we might indeed change the style of anti-inflammatory rather than eliminate all anti-inflammatories, we might try a different alternative one. In terms of the risk of stomach irritation related to anti-inflammatory preparations, um, it's important to recognise that the risk of having a, a stomach upset is related to um, the type of medication. So there are some um, anti-inflammatory preparations that are probably a little more stomach friendly than others. Um, it's also related to the duration of therapy, so that the longer we, um, the longer duration of which you take the anti-inflammatory preparations, the more likely you are to experience symptoms. So, if you're only taking anti-inflammatory preparation for um, short durations of time, maybe a few days here and there, or a week or two here and there, the chance of you having a stomach irritation is is much much less. Um, and then thirdly, it's also related to the dose. So that the higher the dose, the, the, the greater the risk of having a stomach um, irritation. So uh, in that respect, for instance, we would see um, some people who are prone might um, adopt a use of like a, a half strength medication where they still might be getting um, some of the um, benefits in terms of the management of their hip arthritis, but reducing the risk of stomach irritation. So the final group of medications that we need to discuss uh, is the um, use of analgesics. So analgesics are those medications which are a little bit stronger than, uh, say for instance, um, paracetamol products, um, but don't work through a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory mechanism. So they're medications, um, for instance, like codeine, um, tramadol, um, and opiate medications like endone. Um, so analgesic preparations are um, very effective, they're quite strong. They can be used in a blended way with uh, paracetamol products and anti-inflammatories. And generally speaking, if, if you've got to the stage of requiring strong analgesics, then we probably would advise you to take all of those other medications as a baseline as well. Um, the analgesic um, preparations have um, a higher risk of side effects. Um, um, in particular, uh, with the opiate-based analgesics, there's a, a much higher risk of, um, of tolerance and also of addiction. So we do see people in, um, who come in um, initially um, getting a good result from some of these um, stronger opiate analgesic preparations, um, but over time as their body starts to get used to it, uh, they tend to find that they're becoming less and less effective and then they need to start chasing those medications. So in the context that we know that osteoarthritis of the hip joint is a permanent condition and that it's one which is slowly progressive, um, the use of opiate analgesics for pain control I think does need to be done with extreme caution for this reason because um, sometimes we'll get into this spiral where a, a person has um, started to experience more significant symptoms and has to start chasing it all the time with the analgesic and creates a, a real problem for them in the longer term future. So um, our use of opiate analgesics and uh, similar medications is generally um, reserved uh, for the perisurgical space. So those people who are having impending surgery or have just had their operation. And even then, in those scenarios, we generally confine their use to very short durations of time, trying to switch them over onto some of the other preparations uh, in, lieu of the, in lieu of the opiates um, for fear of risk of of, um, of tolerance. Some of those step-down analgesics might include things like um, tramadol or tapentadol uh, or even sometimes the codeine preparations um, which are um, which um, all of them show uh, a slightly reduced risk of, um, of um, uh, addiction profiles um, and um, still provide people with a good step-down analgesia option. 
So I hope that you found this uh, presentation on oral pharmaceuticals in the management of hip osteoarthritis um, useful. Um, if you want to read around the topic, we've got lots of information on our website on uh, brisbanehipclinic.com.au. Have a great day.